In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build an accounting agent that can track all of your expenses. This is something that you can either use for yourself. You can go ahead and sell it to accounting firms or you can productize it, turn it into a SaaS and enter the B2C market with this. There are so many possibilities with this system. Before I get into it, let's go ahead and give it a quick test. So I'm going to grab in this image of a receipt that I have on my desktop receipt number two here it is you can see it's a walmart receipt that i found on the internet for 90 bucks i'm going to click on send and now what this system is going to do the telegram trigger received our input is going to decide where it should route it so it can take audio text documents and images in this case it's an image so it's going to follow this branch and then it will analyze that image and it will then store the information inside this sheet right here so you can see the expense date the vendor is Walmart and then the amount is $90.32. And if I go back on Telegram, you can see that it gave me the result right here as well. And if I zoom in a bit, you can verify that the amount is $90.32. And you can also verify the date at which this receipt was issued. Let's go ahead and give it a test again with a different receipt to make sure it's working. So this is another receipt I found on the internet. I think this is from like a mechanics shop or something like that. My mechanic doesn't give me receipts. Make your mind up why. So let me send this to the bot as well. And then it's gonna follow the same logic. Again, download the image, analyze it, and it will then store it to this sheet right here. Now, sometimes it's not filling in all the columns because the information isn't really available on the receipt or the input that we give it. But you can see here is repair expense description and then the amount is 154.6 so if i go back to telegram you can see that it's 154.6 and the date is also accurate and we've also tested it with some receipts that look like this which the text is not really clear on them and it also works funny enough i was in crete about last month and i was i got some bus tickets because i wanted to go to the beach and they print me a receipt this long for like two dollars or worth of bus tickets and it was in greek and this system was able to understand exactly what it meant and what it was about so now that we did some testing let's go ahead and have a deeper look at how this system works and by the way if you want this template it's going to be available inside my automator school community and also if you're someone who wants to start his own ai agency and you want to fast track your journey to results check out my ai agency partner system this is where we partner up together you me and my team and we help you sign your first five clients 90 percent done for you we give you a proven offer a proven niche a proven path to follow a proven sales process and we also do the fulfillment of your clients so if you're not really technical you don't really have to worry about that there are going to be links for both of these in the description with that said Let's go ahead and have a deeper look. So we have a basic Telegram trigger right here, which is pretty much a Telegram bot. You can create it on Botfather on Telegram. It's very easy, very simple. And every time this Telegram bot receives a message from us, it's going to initiate this workflow. The first thing that happens is the input goes in this router and this router decides which branch it should send the information towards so you can see if it's an audio message that we sent our telegram bot is going to follow this upper branch if it's a text message this branch document like a pdf or something and then for images that maybe you take with your phone is going to follow this lower branch right here now let me uh, show you how this looks like in case you don't want to join my school and you want to build this yourself so you can see the mode here is rules and then these are the routing rules. So pretty much whatever the input from Telegram is, whatever that file is, if this type of input exists, output it as audio. If this type exists, output it as text, document, and image as well, right? And we're also converting the types whenever they are required. So let me go ahead and show you this upper branch first, although most of them are very similar, uh, but let's start with this one. So the first thing we do, if it's an audio input, we download the file directly from Telegram because this is the uh, ID that comes from the, from the trigger. Now, the reason why we need to download it is because agents or LLM models, they don't really understand audio. What they do is they convert your audio to text first and this is what this transcription node actually does it takes as input the audio file from telegram 
it converts it to text and then we are using that text as input inside our agent right here and you can see the prompt we are using as well. So the prompt is, could you extract the following information from the invoice? And then we pretty much give it all the columns that we want to populate inside our Google Sheet. Return in JSON format, only return the JSON without any other text. Here are some rules and we also give it access to the time right now, as you can see right here. And then once it analyzes our audio, it appends it to this sheet right here. So it matches each output of the LLM to this sheet right here. And then at the same time, it responds to us in Telegram with an answer like this one, which pretty much is like a short summary of what that input we gave it was all about. Another thing that it does is it stores the file inside this Google Drive right here, which I've shown you earlier. So all the information that you give to this system is gonna be stored here. You can also structure it in a way where it renames them so everything is organized for you. But you can see guys, it works for also images that are not really clear. Maybe they're in a different language other than English. It absolutely works, we, we tested it quite a bit. Now let's go ahead and have a look at this text branch. This is much simpler because we are getting text directly from the trigger. So we don't really have to download any files and convert them. The input of this model is what comes in directly from our, our trigger here. And then the prompt is pretty much exactly the same. We're also using GPT 4.1 and we are outputting our answer as JSON, and then we're pretty much doing the same thing. There's no point in going over it again. Here's where it gets a little more interesting. So when we send it a document, what we do is we download the PDF and it downloads us a binary file. And then what we're doing is we're using this node in NADN called extract from PDF. You can actually find it here. So extract from file, convert binary data to JSON. So what we're doing here is because we can't really use or input a binary file into this node, message a model node, we are converting it first from PDF to text. Let me I'll walk you through what the binary file is. So this is the output of the Telegram node that downloads the PDF. And this is what it looks like. You can see it's a binary file. And then this is the output of this extract from PDF file node in NADN. And you can see that it pretty much transformed this PDF file into this text that you can see right here. So the reason we're doing this once again is because we can't really input the binary file directly into this node right here. Then we're outputting our content as JSON. We're doing the same thing. And then last but not least, when the input of this system is an image, what we do is we download the image. Again, this is an internal telegram operation. So resource file operation get, and then we're giving it the file ID directly from the, from the trigger. And then we also have download enable. What we're doing here is like a little hack guys that exists in NADN because when we're downloading the image, sometimes it's in a format that is not supported by this node right here. And there is not a way to actually convert an image directly into another format unless you're using this node right here. So what we're doing is we're using the crop image node. And you can see, by the way, it doesn't have any function to convert an image directly. What we're doing is we're cropping this image. We're cropping it in the same exact dimensions that exist in the, in the trigger, in the form that it comes with and we're outputting it in a PNG format. Sometimes you take a picture with your iPhone, it's in that HEIC format, I think, and it's not supported by this model to analyze. So that's what we're essentially doing. So we're, it seems like we're cropping the image, but we're not really cropping it. The dimensions are the same. What we're doing is instead, we are using the, the conversion mechanism that this node has to our benefit. So this is a little, little NADN hack right here. What we're doing here then is we're analyzing this image. So you can see the input type of this node is a binary file that comes directly from this previous node. And then you can see that we don't really have the option to output our answer as JSON. Instead, here is how our answer looks like, or at least as a structured JSON. So let me, let me pull this up. And if I double click here, 
you see we're getting this unstructured table right here that is not really useful to us. And this is why we need this, this code, this code node, because it helps us take this messy data or the output of that and then structure it in a specific format so we can then go ahead and populate our answers in, inside this sheet right here. And then once again, we're kind of doing the same append row operation as well as respond to telegram operation. Again, this is a very simple setup guys, but it is very useful. I've used it myself before. As I told you, when I was in Crete last month, I was kind of playing around with it and it was able to track some really long receipts and it worked just fine. They were also in Greek and Greek is not an easy language. As I said, this template is going to be available inside my premium school community. And then also if you're somebody who wants to start his own agency, you feel stuck, you don't really know what to do or how to get started, what offers are working, what niches are working, go ahead, book in a call with my team below. It's going to be a link. And then we're going to see if you're a good fit. Great. If not, no hard feelings. You're still going to get a lot of value from that conversation. With that said, guys, thanks a lot for watching this video. I appreciate you. Leave me a like, comment below, and I'll see you in the next one.